All right, Tucker, what are you looking at? Well, on Tuesday evening, Joe Biden gave a speech on inflation in which he sought to blame everybody but himself for the situation. His main message to Americans was, please have patience, which you might think is an okay message if he was running for something instead of the guy who has been in charge of this entire with his entire party in the seats of power for more than 15 months. Where at this point, if he had a plan and a way to fix it, we would probably know about it. Biden's solutions at this point were as follows. Well, the Fed can act. You should pass Build Back Better for drug price reduction, which, look, I definitely support that, but it's not even in the top 10 of inflationary effects right now. You should tell companies not to price gouge. By tell, I mean, yes, literally tell and do nothing about it. You should increase biofuels, even though biofuel conversion is part of the reason that we have a diesel crisis right now. We should, quote, speed up the ports, which he's had at this point well over a year to do so. And we should, quote, promote competition. Literally all of those things are nebulous and things that should have been done a year ago because it was easy. So the answer is he's either been holding back this entire time or he's unable to do anything and much more drastic action needs to be taken and considered right now. Obvious question is, okay, Biden, how are you going to do that? How are you going to lower the price of gas? How are you going to produce more energy to lower the cost of living by balancing also our future problems? How are you going to punish companies using the executive office branch? How are you going to, quote, promote competition with your administration? Those are the obvious questions. Instead, the media asked two questions on inflation, and two of them, the only two at the top, are so idiotic and emblematic of how dumb they are, but of the mindset that the elites in this country really have. Let's take a listen to the very first question after Joe Biden's speech. Today you have retail gasoline prices and diesel prices at record highs. Yes. Yet you have yet to ask Americans to consume less. You're a train guy. Have you ever thought of your administration asking Americans to drive less? To Take public transport? Well, if you ever raised a family like mine, you don't have to tell them. They're doing everything in their power to figure out how not to have to show up at the gas pump. The vast, that's why, the, for example, one of the things that's going to help a lot, but it's going to take time, is our infrastructure bill. The very first question to the president about inflation is not how are you going to fix it. It's not what's your plan. It's why are you not telling Americans to drive less? And honestly, Biden is right. You think people at home aren't already figuring it out? <laughs> Some people have to work, lady. Maybe that's never occurred to you. They don't have company-sponsored Ubers and metros to their urban accessible abodes. Some people, and by that I mean most of this country, have zero access to public transit, and they gotta drive to work. In effect, the media is asking Biden why he isn't telling people to limit travel and quality of life as a way in order to lessen the price of gas. It is a purely scary mindset. It's also an elitist mindset. And worse, it is one that lets him off the hook. It's his job to fix the most pressing problems in our life that are tied to government problem, policy. This is where the overwhelming action can at least lessen the burden in the short term or at least give people a plan on a way out. Instead, he abandoned us. Gas right now is probably going to decrease, possibly in the next month or so. Not through any action by Biden. It is due to the overwhelming lockdowns in China, which is the largest importer of gas on the planet. You cannot count on that to save you. He needs to do something. But of course, our media is letting him off the hook. They put the blame on you for living your life. The second question was dumber too, but it also reveals something core about them. Scarcity and neoliberalism are the only things these idiots understand. The second question to Biden was, why is he not dropping the tariffs on China in order to fight inflation? To which he had the audacity to say, they're actually considering it. So let's really go through what the media is saying here. Why don't you drop tariffs on China to reduce inflation when the cause of the vast majority of the inflation that you all are experiencing right now is a result of the fact that we don't make anything here anymore? Really consider how dumb that is. Here is a list of where Americans are experiencing the most inflation. Gas, airfare, eggs, utility gas, used car, hotel, bacon, chicken, milk, the furniture. The only one of those that I just listed that comes from China is furniture. And it's literally all the way at the very bottom. Tariffs off of China would be a boon to the Chinese economy, which is struggling. It would be a boon to the corporations who would buy things for cheaper and still price gouge us. And it would be a robbery away from the American businesses who are trying to compete in the marketplace. 
we got into this situation because we have an executive branch, which for more than 40 years talked a big game and did virtually nothing to increase overall American industry so that when a major crunch like COVID hit, we have zero resilience in the system, no ability to produce anything for ourselves. This has led the media and many Americans to assume there is nothing can be done. Hence why the first question is, hey, why don't you just not drive since you literally need to, don't need to? Or the next one is, why don't you cut tariffs when not having tariffs in the first place are how we even had a country eviscerated at this, at this time. The media mindset matters much more than many of you might consider, because as I have explained previously, the White House only responds to incentives in the media. Those incentives are the most well-known to us as the questions that they ask. They prepare based upon the pressure that they get. So if the only pressure is not to drive and to cut tariffs, what do you think they're gonna have to do to get good media attention? Nobody is asking Biden right now, have you used the full force of the federal government to ensure that we have more drilling ASAP or on the progress of his foreign relations with Saudi Arabia or Venezuela or a multitude of other things? The languishing state of our politics, where we assume nothing can be done, squabble about abortion, and then have an idiotic press not actually hold our president to account, is seemingly how we got here and why we are ruled by corruption and idiocy. Idiocy. We deserve a hell of a lot better, and we should actually demand a lot more. And I really hope I live in a country like that someday. I mean, first <laughs> question, that. first question. I, cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.